Years ago, I had an idea for a cooking blog called Cooking with Moms, which as it sounds, I would spend time with moms in the Boston area and end up cooking some of their recipes with them, learn from them, write stories about them. I was really, really excited about it. And then life got in the way. So I only did it one time, but the one time that I did was really amazing. I met a home cook named Hannah Tron and she showed me how to make bonseo, which is Vietnamese sizzling crepes. It's an incredible dish. It features this beautiful custardy, lacy, crispy crepe wrapped in lettuce leaves with tons of herbs and dipped in nuoc chom, which is one of my ultimate all-time favorite dipping sauces. This is not Hannah's recipe. It's Andrew Janjigians who works at the Test Kitchen. It's really, really easy to follow and the flavors are incredible. So let's get started. We're gonna start with a little Thai chili here. I'm just gonna do kind of a nice slice on this to start. If you want, you could throw it in whole in the mortar and pestle. It's just gonna break down a lot more easily, cut into more even sized pieces. I'm gonna transfer it seeds and all right into my mortar. Next up is garlic. So just one garlic clove here. And again, I'm gonna do a little mince on it. I'm not gonna to get too fussy about it because we're gonna go in the mortar. So I could try to grind this just straight as is with the pestle, but it's nice to add an abrasive in there. And I'm gonna use some sugar for that purpose. Sugar goes into the sauce anyway. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon and then get my pestle. So the trick here is to start with a kind of a pounding motion and then let the pestle do most of the work for you. So you wanna have it just kind of bouncing along, smashing everything up a little bit before we really start grinding. All right, now that it's mostly incorporated, then I'm gonna to switch to a grinding motion. So here I'm crushing it against the sides and really start to break down. I kind of reverse motion, go back and forth, beautiful. So now what I'm gonna do is transfer this over to the bowl here. You can see it's turned almost like pink orange and that's all the color coming out of the chili. I didn't get everything out, but that's okay. So to help dissolve the sugar, uh, we're actually gonna use hot water. So I've got my measuring cup over here, and my electric tea kettle, and I'm just gonna dispense two thirds of a cup of water. It's eventually gonna end up in the bowl, but I like to put it in the mortar first. And this is gonna allow me to get every little bit that's still in there. and pour it into the bowl. So the original amount of sugar was there as an abrasive, but we do need a little bit more just to balance the whole flavor of the sauce. And so I'm gonna add two more tablespoons of sugar and stir until that is dissolved. Okay, great. Next up, we're gonna add fish sauce. We're gonna go with five tablespoons. It's gonna bring salt, obviously, but also tons of umami, really, really meaty richness. Okay, so now we have sweetness and we have umami and saltiness. We need acidity and that's gonna come in the form of limes. I'm gonna start with two limes. That's usually enough, depends on the time of year and how juicy they are. I like to roll them first, get the juices going, slice them in half and we'll juice. Now we want a quarter of a cup. I like to do a little strainer just to get rid of the pulp and have this really kind of clean, clear looking sauce. Beautiful. All right, so that goes in with all the other ingredients. So that is it, that is our nook chom. It's going to flavor everything in this dish. So we'll set this aside and we'll get everything else ready to go. It's time to make the batter for the bonseo and the key to it is the right amount of starch and getting it to form a really nice gel. As that gel heats up in the skillet, the water is driven off and what's left behind is crispy on the edges and nice and custardy and soft on the inside. And so the bulk of it comes from rice flour. So you wanna look for white rice flour. I'm weighing on the scale here and I want three ounces of rice flour. Rice flour is awesome for crisping. It gets super, super crunchy, so the edges will be really nice and crispy, but it doesn't absorb water super fast. We actually found that that helped have a little bit of cornstarch in the mix. Three tablespoons. The rest of the dry ingredients are really simple. We're gonna do a half teaspoon of turmeric. We're gonna make a gorgeous yellow color in these crepes and a little bit of flavor. A quarter teaspoon of table salt for seasoning. I'll just whisk these together until combined to help it hydrate faster and to get rid of any grittiness, we're actually gonna use one cup of warm water. We're looking for something in the 120 to 130 degree range. And whisk it until it's smooth. I'm gonna let this hydrate for a little bit while I work on the rest of the ingredients. While the batter hydrates, we're gonna focus on all the fresh ingredients that are just gonna make this taste incredible. We have our lettuce leaves, which is what we're gonna to use to wrap up little bites of the crepe. I'm using bib lettuce here. You can use green leaf or red leaf lettuce, which would be really nice as well. And I've got herbs. So herbs are really, really important to Vietnamese cuisine in general, and definitely to this dish. So I've got some Thai basil and cilantro. If you have access to other Vietnamese herbs, absolutely get them here. So we're gonna work with the Thai basil first. I'm just gonna take off these nice big leaves, pop them over here. And this is gonna be my serving platter. So it's really lay everything out and let everyone pick and grab and assemble their own. It's very good communal food. 
And after the cilantro, you can leave them whole if you want. The stems are edible the entire way down. I like to make it maybe a little bit more delicate and just take that top part, so some thin stems. Beautiful. So I've got my lettuce leaves and I've got this gorgeous pile of herbs. So I'm just gonna set that aside and get the rest of the ingredients ready for the crepe itself. When Hannah made this dish for me, she used red onions and I really love that sweetness. So that's what we're gonna use here. I'm just gonna slice them really thin. So I just have them down the middle and then slice thin. Beautiful. So now it is time for the proteins. Now traditionally, Bonseo has both pork and shrimp in it. And so we're gonna include both of those here. I'm using some boneless country style ribs today. You only need four ounces for this recipe. So look for ones that have a little bit of a darker color to them. They'll be a little bit juicier in the finished product. So I'm gonna cut these into basically two inch matchsticks. So they're really small pieces and they're really there for texture and just little hits of flavor. And then I'm gonna cut them crosswise. So we get that nice two inch length that way. And then I will just go across this way to make nice matchsticks. Okay, so that's the pork, and the next step is the shrimp. So I'm working with six ounces of pretty small shrimp. These are 3140s. And what we're gonna do first is cut them in half lengthwise and then crosswise to just make nice little pieces. I'm gonna finish up these last few shrimp, and then it'll be time to start cooking. I've got my 12 inch nonstick skillet with a teaspoon of oil in it, and I've been heating over medium high heat until it's just shimmering. So I'm actually gonna use this to cook all of the filling for all three crepes. It kind of helps just to cook it ahead of time, and then it's much easier to make each prep as you go. We're gonna start with our pork and our onion. I'm gonna cook this until the pork is no longer pink and the onion has softened, which will take anywhere from five to seven minutes. The onion and the pork are looking great, so I'm gonna add my shrimp now, and another quarter teaspoon of salt. And because these shrimp are gonna to continue to cook once they're in the crepe, we're gonna take them until they just turn pink, which takes about two minutes. All right, those look beautiful, smell good too. So I'm gonna transfer them to a large bowl, and with some paper towels, I'm just gonna wipe my skillet. We're gonna use it for the crepe, so we don't wanna wash it at this point. Time to get back to our batter. So it's been sitting for a long time. That rice flour has had a chance to hydrate really nicely. Now it's time for some richness. I've got a third of a cup of full-fat coconut milk. So in addition to the third of a cup of coconut milk, I also have two teaspoons of vegetable oil. And while I'm doing this with my oil, I'm gonna add two teaspoons to my skillet over here and I'll put it over medium high heat until it just starts to smoke. That's why I know it's gonna be hot enough to keep going. And we'll just whisk this until nice and combined. Skillet is nice and hot, so it's time to go in with a third of our filling. And I'm just trying to heat this through, so about 30 seconds. Now we push the filling to one side of the skillet. I'm a righty, so I like to have the filling over here because I'm gonna flip the crepe onto that, so it's a lot easier with my right hand. Great, so now it's time for our batter. I'm gonna add a half a cup of the batter. You wanna get it in there pretty quickly and then give yourself the opportunity to shake the skillet a little bit if you need to, just to evenly distribute it. Because it's a hot skillet and it's sizzling, it's gonna set really, really quickly, so you wanna work pretty fast. And in we go. Beautiful, so you can see it's already got lots of little bubbles in the top, like when you make pancakes, they're popping through. That's gonna give us some of that nice lacy texture. The edges are gonna crisp a lot faster, but the interior will stay a little bit custardy. So onto the filling side, I'm gonna add a cup of bean sprouts. These are gonna soften a little bit, but they're still gonna retain a lot of that crunch and be really nice inside there. So we're gonna let this go for about four to five minutes until it completely releases from the bottom of the skillet. And then at that point, we'll turn down the heat and we'll go until it is nice and crispy on the bottom and custardy on the inside. So it's been about four minutes and I'm just gonna give a good shake on the pan and see if it's loose enough to come free. And it is. You can see some browning around the edges, which is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna lower the heat to medium low and go for about another two minutes until I can tell that it's nice and browned around the edges. All right, so it's definitely nice and crispy and brown on the bottom, that looks awesome. So now it's time to flip. And for this, I like to do it with a little bit of authority so that you really get it over and covering the entire thing. One nice smooth motion. Just like that, beautiful. So that one is done. I'm gonna slide it out right over here onto my wire rack, which is set in a rim baking sheet. Looks great. And I'm gonna keep this warm in a 275 degree oven while I finish the other ones. So all three Bonseo are cooked and looking absolutely gorgeous, crispy, lacy on the outside. They smell amazing. We've got all of our other fresh stuff and our dipping sauce, our nok chom. So now it is time to eat. I'm gonna get one and bring it over to the cutting board here. I've got my knife here, so I'm just gonna cut it into roughly one and a quarter inch thick strips. Now it's just all about assembly. So I take a nice lettuce leaf here, and grab a nice little end piece, 
of my bonsaio. Put that in there. A couple leaves of Thai basil, a couple sprigs of cilantro. So we'll just wrap it up. And then we dunk. Mm. It's so good. It's unbelievably flavorful. You get all these amazing different textures. You get the creamy crepe versus the crispy parts of it. Those onions that fried up got a little bit crispy. The tender lettuce leaf, all those aromatic herbs. And then the nook chum is just unbelievably flavorful. And you know what? Hannah is right. It is all about this. It's all about that fish sauce. So much of it gets sucked up in there. If you love this sauce as much as I do, you'll love this dish. One of the world's great dishes right here. So the keys to doing it well are to use a combination of rice flour and corn starch in the batter. Use warm water to help it hydrate faster and pre-cooking the fillings to make it a little bit easier when you get to the stove and you're making the crepes. So from America's Test Kitchen at home, my favorite recipe for bonseo. Big shout out to Hannah Tron for showing me how to do it in the first place and to Andrew Janjigian for this awesome recipe. Thanks for watching. You can get all of the recipes from this season, along with our product reviews and more at our website, americastestkitchen.com slash TV. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.